what we need to do is cut it to release him. So this is the function of your Ho'oponopono, is to release, to cut all of these ties. I'd like to, uh, I'm sure that whoever, uh, this particular party, wouldn't mind my bringing this case up. Case number one. This, uh, this person, two young men, driving on a motorcycle at night. In making a, tur- a turn on a corner, we'll just put down uh, case number one. Yeah. Okay. Case two. Case yeah, I'll make two. Case number two. Two young men riding on a motorcycle at night. In making a turn on the road, one young man dies. All right, now, how would I do this case? So I put A would be the name of the young man that was driving. Put A. A is the young, the driver. We put the driver. Number B, not B, way down here, because it's B down here. Way down here. No, right down here, right there, B. The victim. Is the victim of the accident or passenger? So we start with that, and a class... I le- left it open for the class to put in more into this. So someone said, death on the curve, where? So the name of that place was Dead Man's Curve. Dead Man's Curve, right on the curve. Dead Man's Curve, right under there, yeah. Dead Man's Curve. So that is <coughs> rather suggestive. So someone said, there must be other people who died at that curve, probably. So we put in the you know, possibility of other souls who have died on that curve, others who died on the curve. <coughs> you know, I was just wondering, is it too much if we started from the top? We won't have, oh, maybe, do we have a side? Oh, that's fine. So then that means way back to the beginning of time, there might have been others who died at that particular spot. Now, at night, I asked the question, if there was a sign at that curve, there was no sign. So the problem is that the Department of Transportation in Honolulu is in charge of placing sign. There was no adequate sign, so we put the Department of Transportation. So then someone said, well, we have to have the family, relatives, and ancestors of both people, A and B. So, so you could see how, how this thing can grow and expand and expand. <laughs> Depends on your imagination. Because of the fact that this accident occurred in Kaneohe, somewhere near the Pali, and the... Uh, the battle of the new one of Pali, where many of the people were thrown over the Pali, over the precipice. Some of them felt, maybe some of them walked over or crawled over to this area and then still are earthbound. And we take care of that too. Then I asked, why did the young man pick up a motorcycle when he didn't have a license to drive? See, there, you, you need a motorcycle license. But he did have a license to drive the car. So he said, Susan, Susan, or whoever the young lady is, did not want to lend her car. That was the beginning of the accident. Susan did not want to lend her car, so the two boys went on a motorcycle. So actually went right back to the young lady because she refused the use of the car. So she too is involved with this thing here. Uh, do you have Susan? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So then um, the party said, well, the mayor had sent a letter saying the young man was drunk or was under the, un uh, the influence of liquor. So if this is so, then we put the mayor's name down. He's involved too. I see the connection. You're talking about Arca Chords. I tell you, it runs a gamut from here to there. Then, then we talk about the fact that um, when the ambulance came to pick the young man, that would be the ambulance driver, the doctor, the nurses, the coroner. Yeah. So it's about five minutes. I it all includes the mortician. The includes the mortician too. Yeah. And uh, gee, I don't know what it was. Um, it, it took up quite a space, didn't we? In that about three times this. Yes. But it gives you a, uh, an idea how this can be expanded out. And you can sit and think, well, it's maybe somebody else, so we put it on. We, we never leave anybody out. Possibilities are. So we put it on, and then, so what we did was to do a whole puna puna on ourselves first. Then we as a class would do Ho'oponopono with these people and all others unbeknownst to us that are related. Radio or newspapers. Does not that set up the negative thought forms or the ACA chords for the people who read it? It and does. It, also? it does. And you can program it off. You can help with the situation. The, the question was, if we looked at uh, a situation over the TV or radio or we hear about it, uh, it, does it not affect us? It does, because we are absorbing it through visual, visually. We, we are establishing an ACA court. And you can help, you can, to some degree, help. But this one is getting to really finite case. You know. So. So what we did, do a whole point between ourselves and everybody on now the class is doing it with those on the board, all mm. on the board. Then here, these on the board, we do to us. We transmute all of this into pure light. Yeah. Because... In the case of uh, Goodwill, I don't know if there are Goodwill agencies here, where people give clothing... Uh, I will be coming to okay. that. I will be coming to that. So that when we do this, we have erased from all of these people's computer or memory bank this unhappy and traumatic situation. They may remember it, but the pain is gone. The trauma is gone. So when we've done this, yeah, so she's talking about the umbrella coverage, which is true. You're covering the whole thing plus any others that's not on a board that may be related that we do not know of. So when it was finished, the case, yes. Uh, about the, the, uh, the court case, also the attorneys, and the, uh, uh, they were also all involved. Yes. Which was also. That's true. Thank you. Attorneys. Thank you, Martha. And then it, there's a job Yeah. Judge the attorney, prosecutor, on both sides. Prosecutor, attorney, on both sides. Weren't there several attorneys with us? Somebody it doesn't matter. The All the attorneys yeah. were yeah. including yeah. That. Yes. Witnesses, possibly? Yes, witnesses. Now, I was told that no one had seen the accident, but I said the first people that were on the spot just to view it are considered witnesses. They are part because the Alka cord is already connected. They used in that case the witnesses from the restaurant to say that the young men were not drunk when they had stopped by and had dinner. That's true. So as the mayor's letter said that the young man was under the influence of liquor, the witnesses at the restaurant said they were not under the influence of liquor when they left the, the restaurant. So all these controversial statements were being brought up. So we had more than, than, but I'm just kind of giving you a rough idea what it is. So by so doing, we did this on Tuesday, Tuesday night. This is our class period. And uh, on Wednesday, the mother talked to the young man and said, we have done a whole ponopono for you. It might make you feel a lot better. Because the young man has studied 
meditation, so he understood very well and appreciated uh, the, the work we'd done. So what he did was sent a lot of his effort to energize the courtroom and the prosecutor, the judges, and that was it. So I said to the class, I wouldn't doubt, uh, I, I feel that the case would be postponed as a result of the whole ponopono. Now this is Tuesday, Wednesday. On Thursday, it was postponed. On Friday, he was acquitted. And the attorney that, that did it, he had never in his whole life of uh, doing as an attorney has ever had an acquittal. And this is an interesting case, a very interesting case. So I taped the, uh, the words when the mother spoke about it to us, and she was very grateful. And uh, we, we taped her, and so I played the tape in my sci social psychology group that I was talking to. It was to show them that it was so, that the mother was saying how wonderful the results had been as a Ho'oponopono. In fact, she is in an executive capacity at the university, and she has applied it even before she knew the rudiments of Ho'oponopono. Just hearing it in a lecture, she had come just to listen, and then she decided to take the course. But in the second lesson, she met with a confrontation in some work that she was doing. She thought, now I wonder what Morna was trying to tell me. So she kind of put it roughly, went to her room and did this the best she could. Hour later, she called the meeting again and everything was in a balance. She said it was just marvelous. Yes. Uh, would you be good enough to tell how you did the woman come out of yourself when you're working? With yes. Okay. The, yes. Uh, yes, that will be fine. You can turn it over. Thank you. First of all, what does this word mean? A point, a point, a point, a point. It's problem solving. <laughs> <laughs> Problems. Uh, I might add, this is problem and karmic cleansing. Karmic cleansing and problem solving. I didn't do it. <laughs> That's okay. That's fine too. Would you erase that? I hate to erase this. I get these little love notes all the time from from classes, so it's I'm accustomed to it. You might have to write a little smaller, you know, when you divine creator. What was the other problem solving? Karmic cleansing. No, no, it's okay, just problem solving. Under it is uh, karmic cleansing. No, right here. Yeah, karmic cleansing. Now, I use the word divine creator because a lot of people do not, are not very happy when you say, dear God. There's some people. So I use the word divine creator because in our concept, divine creator is a little bit more, uh, we are more comfortable with that. So in using the principles that I have just shown before this, that is the father, mother, son aspect, so I use that as divine creator, father, mother, son as one. Yeah. Can you write that? I didn't have any, uh, I should have brought some Xerox ones, but uh, this might give you, you can make copies of it. Copy this one, or I can have some Xeroxed before we finish the session. Father, mother, son as one. It's on that principle, father, mother, son as one. This way. If I, my families, if I... Lord. 
Now remember, you're not asking forgiveness for yourself alone. You must take your whole family, relatives, and ancestors together with you. And you're doing a good job that way. Okay. It's a little difficult for me for a while to talk to a lot of people that ancestors are very important. Aumakuas are very important, but they are. Because in all my work in working with lo a lot of groups of different nationalities, I find that they have Aumakuas as we do. And they're just concerned about their, their descendants as ours are. So no matter where you go, we have Aumakuas, whether they're Indian, Chinese, or Japanese, or whatever. KUA. If we have offended, you can just try Families, relatives, and yeah. <laughs> In thoughts, you put it, put it out here because you will, will be running out. In thoughts, words, deeds, and actions. And this is similar to your Lord's Prayer, anyway, to your 23rd Psalm, to many other prayers. But however, I find this most effective. And I find that people of different um, nationalities are able to use it very effectively even in their own uh, language. Okay. From the beginning of our creation. Now when I say from the beginning of our creation because we don't know when we were created. And according to my own knowledge is the fact that when we were created we were a blueprint. That blueprint was from the beginning to eternity. Where on this whole spectrum you are, I don't know. But from the beginning of your creation, not of creation itself, but of your creation, to the present. No, not our. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. The beginning of our creation, to the present. Humbly, humbly. You all for forgiveness. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you could take from there. When we say our, you're including your relatives, your families, also your ancestors. For example, if I'm talking about the situation here, as many of you have crossed this area a long time ago. So before coming to this area or any area that you have not been before, you must always do a ho'oponopono. Because in another period of time, you, may, you might have been sacrificed. In another period of time, you might have killed someone else. So we're going through that, and then all these karmic things will sift up and will be erased as you get to those places. The reverence that one has for places and nature is foremost. 
we talk about the land gods, the ocean gods, the gods of the mountain, uh, the gods of the rivers and the streams, the rain gods, the clouds, the, the moon, the stars, and the constellations. We call them gods because we had a great reverence for them. And, when we, and uh, the earth itself, the stone, so everything we had great reverence for. Because when we look at ourselves, we find in us is the mineral, the vegetable, the animal king, is all within us. So we can associate and affiliate with this. But the thing is that we do not have the respect and the love and the concern for the things around us. I see a lot of people walking on the way there and not even aware there's some plants here and the beautiful grass that grows and the mountains, the breeze that comes through. It's something that is lacking in a world today, that appreciation of nature itself, of the very things that surround us that lend to our environment when we are not appreciating them. And so with this kind of a thing, I feel it kind of takes you back to your grassroots. It kind of makes you aware and appreciate the things around you, whether it is a desert or is a snowy area or it's in the tropics. So wherever I go, I really feel a deep appreciation of everything around me because I feel it's God expressed. Would this be a chance, chance? I beg your pardon? Would this be a chance? No, no, not at all. Has uh -uh. it been phone up, phone up, been dried on the hostage? Create tor, T-O-R. I beg your pardon? Has the phone up, phone up, been dried on the hostages? On the hostages? Well, this is an interesting thing in my work at... Uh,